Okay, so we're going to begin by sitting on our knees and we're going to just take a little cushion just between your feet and your bum, makes it a little bit more comfortable. And obviously flatten those feet, you don't want to be tucking those toes this whole time. We're going to take a prana mudra, prana being life force. So we're going to take the pinky finger and the ring finger and match it to the thumb on both sides. So as you can see here, we just have the first two fingers up, placing them palm up on the knees. And just beginning to ground ourselves. Inhaling for one. Exhale for one. Inhale for two. Exhale for two. Inhale for three. Exhale for three. Really fill up those lungs. Inhale for four. Exhale for four. If you feel as though you cannot go any further at the top of the breath, just try sipping a little bit. One more inhale for five. Exhale for five. And keeping this really nice elongated breath. Imagining the body's filling with lovely, rich, nourishing energy and releasing itself from energy that doesn't serve us or anything that's a little bit negative or left over from the day. It's really nice just to eradicate those or at least visualize eradicating those energies. I always encourage uh, my students, um, my classmates to really work to elongate the breath. Sometimes when we're working, we don't even realize that the breath can become so shallow and it can become almost panting, which actually makes the body go into the sort of fight or flight mode. This sort of shallow breathing allows for quick pace, allows for the ability to run fast. But what we need to remember to do is to counter that with long breathing, the breathing that says to the body, it's okay, we're safe now. Today we'll be focusing on opening up the heart chakra, the chakra of openness and also we will be doing our usual stretching and lovely nourishing flow with a couple of poses thrown in there to give us a little bit of a challenging extra nugget of fun <laughs> Inhale to join the hands in Anjali Mudra, prayer over the heart. Taking one more inhale here, and lifting the gaze and lifting the shoulders up. So we're actively pushing them up to the ears. And we're taking that gaze up. Exhale to drop the chin to the chest, drop the hands, drop the shoulders. Take the hands behind the head. And we're just gonna open up that little area in the back of the neck. It's a really nice space. Because although, yeah, we do crane our necks to see a screen all day, we're not dropping the head. We're not giving it that little bit of passive stretch. We're always tensing. Inhale, open the eyes. I'm gonna lift the hands up, taking a really nice long stretch. Super, super long here. Each finger is really, really active. 
don't know why you can't see the top of my screen. Exhaling, cactus in the arms, bending at the elbow, taking that chest nice and open here, taking the gaze up, really getting a nice stretch across the collarbones here. Exhale, linking the hands behind the body. We're going to just fold at the hips, hinging forward. We're not trying to round the spine, keeping it nice and straight, lifting up those hands to work into those thoracic joints at the top of the spine. Inhale to lift back up, taking the right hand, placing it on the left thigh, Left hand comes behind and we're twisting open just to get a nice little twist going through the mid back and the abdomen. Making sure that back is straight, keeping those elbows in. Inhale to stretch up, exhale, twist round. Inhale, taking those hands back to center. Right hand comes, sorry, left hand comes onto right knee. Left, the right hand comes behind the body. Inhale to lift up, exhale to twist around. Inhale, hands come back to center, placing the hands on the thighs. Just going to roll those shoulders nice and active here. Before we inhale, link the hands in front of the body and we want to concave that back. So rather than opening up the chest like we were doing, we're pushing it actively back, bowing the rib cage, using this hand in front of us as our sort of pulling mechanism, something to work against when we're trying to open up the space between the shoulder blades. Inhale to release. And we're going to remove any sort of cushions or anything that we might need to support us. Coming onto our hands and knees. Inhaling, we're gonna tuck those toes. Lifting up the gaze, lowering the belly, coming into our cow. Maybe get a little wiggle going on here. Just a little one. Exhaling to round the spine. Actively pushing that area between the shoulder blades up towards the ceiling. In turn, the lumbar spine will stretch and it'll be probably a really lovely stretch to counter anything we've been doing today. Chin comes straight into the chest. And maybe we just want to get a little walk forward and backwards going here. Inhale, taking that gaze up. Getting a little wiggle here. And throughout our cat cow, we can wiggle side to side, forwards and backwards. Maybe let's just go for a little roundy, roundy. Moving the body in any which way that feels comfortable, feels like it needs a bit of love and attention. Before we actively take the legs super wide, dropping the chest down, hands nice and long, sending the chin towards the mat. If the chin doesn't reach or it feels uncomfortable, take the forehead. Coming into our wide-legged puppy pose. I really love this pose because it actively pushes the chest down underneath where the hands are. I really like this pose because it actively pushes that chest down and allows for just a little bit of extra movement in the spine. For a little bit of extra stretch, maybe you can just come up onto the fingertips, taking the whole arm off the mat, taking the gaze forward. 
maybe sending the hands super wide as well for something a little extra between the shoulders. Inhaling to bring those hands back into center. Knees come underneath the hips once again, keeping the forearms down. We're gonna work the body through the hands, coming to our Sphinx pose. And here, you can take the legs either straight behind or you can spread them out nice and wide if you have a little bit of back difficulty. And we're actively pushing down each finger and each part of the arm. And taking that chest up and taking those shoulders down to get a really gentle back bend, but also to open up that chest area. I can feel a stretch in my neck already. Inhale, taking the feet back in, tucking the toes, bringing the hands out in front of us. Gonna lift up the body, coming into our up dog. And with our up dog, it's really nice to be able to flatten those feet but also to get those hips as close to the ground, but not on as possible. Hands can come either directly underneath where the shoulders would be, or you can bring them a little bit further forward for a little bit of extra comfort and room. If it starts to pull or pinch on that lower back, move the feet out. If it's still a little bit pinchy, tuck the toes. Lifting up into our first down dog of the day. And here we can walk out the dog left to right. Maybe try taking the whole weight over left arm, right arm. Maybe try lifting up both toes, both heels, really working into those toe and ankle joints and the wrists, giving them a little bit of, a little bit of love, a little bit of a workout here. <sighs> Inhale to take the gaze forward, rippling the body into our plank. And with the plank here, it's really nice to be able to just push those heels back and take that gaze forwards. Exhaling, taking the knees just to hover a few inches above the ground. Working into that core. Inhale. Hands come or feet come down towards the mat. Inhale, right hand comes into the center. Left hand lifts up, coming into our side plank here. With the side plank, it's really nice to be able to push up those hips, making a C with the body. Maybe taking that hand over to open up a different muscle. For a supported option, you can lower that right, that bottom leg. So and set, extend out that leg and extend out that left leg. <sighs> really nice here. Inhale to lift up, flipping the hands over, taking the left hand down the left leg Right hand comes up and over into our gate and gaze can come up just next to that arm. So we're really working into a nice side stretch for the right side of the body. Inhale, hands come down, back into our plank, lowering those legs. And coming back to our down dog. Inhale from our down dog here to look forward. Bring that left hand into the center of the mat, coming onto the inside outside edge of the feet and coming into our side plank on the left. Again, pushing up those hips. The feet can come next to each other or one in front of one another. And that hand again can come up and over the head, looking forward 
or down, whichever feels good. Remember to breathe. Inhale to lower that bottom leg, coming into a nice supported side plank option. Inhale to lift the body up all the way over. Right hand comes down the left leg. Left hand comes up and over the body into our gate pose. It's a really nice side stretch for the left side. <sighs> Inhale, cartwheel the hands over, back into our down dog. From our down dog, we're going to lift up the right foot to come into our three-legged dog. And this is really nice because you can actively push those toes to be pointing down towards the mat. The, you know, the sort of default is to really kind of push them out here. So we're working into those external leg muscles, but this is quite a nice bit of discipline to bring into the body, moving those toes to point downwards. Inhale to tuck in the knee. And we're going to take it to the outside edge of the elbow. Exhale brings it back out. Inhale, tucking it in once again, twisting the body, bringing it to the left arm. Exhale, sends it back. And inhale to open up that hip. And we're going to take a really nice open hip here. So we take the heel towards the bum, we take the knee out towards the side. Inhale to take the knee forward once again, popping it down into a nice pigeon. Grab yourself a block, pop it underneath the hip bone if it feels a little bit uncomfortable. Back foot can be nice and flat. Hands can come in front of the body here, maybe just up on the fingertips, or you can come down to the forearms. Or if you're super flexible and you like a little bit of a stretch, you can make a little cushion with the hands and bring down the forehead onto the mat. By tapping into places like the hips, like the shoulders, like the back, we're really actively allowing the body to be vulnerable, which can maybe sometimes feel overwhelming, but in order to feel better or to feel like the best version of ourselves, we often have to be a little bit vulnerable. You don't have to take those hands up once again, tucking that back foot, we're gonna remove the block, don't forget. Lifting up that leg once again into our three-legged dog. And inhaling, taking that foot, bringing it to the left side of the mat, to come into our falling star. Coming onto the outside edge of the right foot, Hand is up towards the ceiling. Exhale to lower down, bringing that foot back in, coming back into our down dog. And we'll do the same on the other side. Inhale to lift up that left leg into a three-legged dog, pointing those toes towards the ground, seeing how high we can get that foot. Inhale to look forward, bending the knee, bringing the weight forward, tapping that knee onto the outside edge of the left elbow. Inhale, brings it back to our three-legged dog. Inhale, bringing that knee forward once again, crossing it over the body, twisting it, taking it to the right hand and lifting it up again. Inhale to open up the hip by taking the heel towards the bum, knee comes out to the side. Keeping those toes active. 
inhale scooping that leg all the way forward this time bringing it through coming straight into our pigeon and with our pigeon our knee is bent under the body bring yourself a little block take it underneath the hip if you want a little bit extra support back foot can be flat hands can support the body from here or you can lower down onto the forearms or you can take again a little pillow with the hands maybe try the other way this time left hand on top of right for me but whatever floats your boat taking some nice elongated breaths here if you've fallen out of sync with your breath don't worry you can get it back Inhale, looking forward, coming back up onto those hands. Tucking the back toes, removing a block. Bringing up that leg back into a three-legged dog. Inhale to scoop the leg back into the chest. Exhale, shoots it out to the right side. Taking the left hand onto the mat, lifting up the right to come into our fallen star. And that leg can just stay there or it can lift if you're feeling particularly strong today. Exhale, lowering down. Into our down dog. Walking the feet towards the hands. Taking the feet a little bit pointed out. Hands come to the mat into our forward fold and here we can take hand to elbow behind the head get a nice passive stretch going on here and we want to be working towards putting the chest onto the thighs here so if we need to bend the legs that's fine actually feels a lot nicer to do that And this will just open up any residual tension in the back and in the neck. I'm lowering the arms, you can even get those arms and going, maybe taking a little sway here, maybe bringing the whole body into it. Why not? Inhale to look forward. Remember we said about those feet pointing out? We're going to take a bind around each big toe. So that's peace fingers, first, second finger and thumb. And exhale to bend the legs. Hands and arms come inside the legs. Coming to a little squat here. Inhale to lift back up. Keeping the hands inside the legs, coming to a little squat. There we go for a little wiggle. Inhale to lift back up. Nice flat back here. One more time, inhaling, lowering the bum, exhaling in our yogi squat. Hands come to Anjali Mudra, prayer on the heart. And when we were in our yogi squat, a lot of people struggle to find that center of balance. So we see a lot of heels off the ground or a lot of almost on the floor. I can't even replicate it. So if you feel that way, take a little block under your bum, gives you something to sit on, or just feel free to stay on your toes. There's no rule that says you can't. Just a little bit more wobbly for me. <laughs> And to finish, to come back to our seated position, we're going to take a very graceful pose. I call it sitting. <laughs> Bringing our feet actually to butterfly. And with butterfly, 
we can take the soles of our feet together, taking the knees out, binding the hands around the feet. So we've got something to pull against to make sure that we're keeping that chest nice and upright. And we're also keeping the back nice and straight here. Inhaling to lift up the legs. Exhaling, sending them down. So it's just a really slow butterfly, flapping its very calm crimson wings. Lovely. Finishing by taking our right foot into the groin area. Left foot comes out. Making sure that we're nice and straight here, up through the chest. We're gonna take that left hand, bring it towards the left foot, binding again with our first finger and thumb around the big toe. And taking that right hand up and over the body. Now here you might get to a point where you feel as though, okay, I'm not getting any further. Let me just round spine. And I would advise against doing that because the idea here is to open up the chest. So by lifting up that hand and keeping that chest pointed outwards, we're really opening up and we can feel a nice side stretch here on the side. If you wanna go a little bit further, bend that elbow into the space just behind the, just underneath the knee. And you can take that hand and maybe give it a little bind here. I think that removes the temptation to want to bring that hand towards the foot. Inhale to lift back up, swapping the feet round. So right foot comes out, left heel comes into the groin. Peace fingers and thumb, taking it towards that left, that right foot. Inhale, lifting up that right hand, coming into our nice open position. Getting a really good stretch across the chest. And getting a really good side stretch here. You might find that one side is slightly more bended than the other. I'm noticing that. On this side, it's a lot easier for me to get that hand towards the foot, not that that's the goal. So I am going to remove the temptation by binding the hand behind the body. If you can, you can just skim the fingers against the thigh, bending that elbow. Inhale to lift up. Coming into our Dandasana to finish. Toes actively point up towards the body. And we're drawing up the muscles in the legs, up in the thigh, the kneecaps, the shins, removing any flesh from the bones in the body. Lifting up nice and tall, nice and long here. Exhale, hinging at the back of the hips. Hinging forward, getting that chest onto the thighs. And hands come to the feet, or they come to the ankles, or they maybe bind the toes once again, or they come to the outside. Possibilities here are endless, folks. Inhale, bringing the knees up, feet down taking the hands just around the shins, bringing in the head, coming into our cosmic egg. A fellow yogi, or actually my yoga teacher, taught me this move, said it was her favorite. So I try and incorporate it wherever I can. Bringing the elbows out for a little bit of extra balance if you're struggling. Inhale, hands come behind the thighs. We're just going to hover here in our Navasana boat pose. Maybe we take those legs straight, 
Maybe we take the hands to the side. Maybe we take them behind the head. And lower the body down all the way, coming into our Shavasana. Palms up, feet come out to the side. <sighs> Letting the body just melt into the mat. Are we still breathing? Maybe you've got the same, you've been able to keep that same pace of breath throughout the entire class. If so, that's amazing. If not, don't worry. It's just natural for the body to change it up. And just observe how you feel. Do you feel stretched? Do you feel tired? Do you feel energized? Do you feel happy? Give yourself a little smile if you're happy. <laughs> but most importantly, do you feel balanced? Maybe you've been sat at a desk with your legs crossed, one leg over the other. All day, you feel a little bit out of whack. Hopefully, class we've just done has been able to rectify that. If that's the case. By having a little bit of balance, we're able to absorb information better and we're able to take on the day or week or task a little bit more wholeheartedly, having taken care of ourselves first. Gonna take a moment just to thank ourselves for coming to the mat today. And thanking our bodies for giving us strength. Thanking our minds for giving us space. And today we're going to thank somebody else. Someone that's inspired you. Maybe someone who took on the heavy lifting today so that you could have a little bit of time for yourself. It might be somebody that just brightened your day. Send some good vibes to them. <sighs> Feel free to extend Shavasana as long as you want to, but I am gonna end the class here. Otherwise, I might fall asleep. <laughs> Inhale, wiggle those fingers and toes, lifting the hands up over the head. Nice, deep stretch here. Fingers and toes active, spreading them out one last time. Inhale, bringing knees up onto the chest, taking the hands around the shins, and we're just going to roll one side and the other. Getting a nice twist here. Before taking our favorite side, make a little hand, make a little pillow with the hand before lifting yourself up to come into a seated position. Cross-legged or butterfly. Whatever feels good. Hands to Anjali Mudra.
Inhale to lift. Hands to the third eye. The light in me sees the light in you. The strength in me honors the strength in you. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs> and we have a little visit just at the end of class. Thanks everyone. Bye.